what I found is really important is the way that they, uh, the students know that a proof is wrong is much more important at the level that we're teaching them than them actually being able to come up with um, the new loop invariant on their own. And so this is actually, it's a little bit lower in the hierarchy of understanding to say here's a loop invariant um, of a loop. Um, either give me a, um, either explain why this loop invariant is preserved by every iteration of the loop, which is just a matter of symbol, like we're, we're teaching them to symbolically execute the loop body forward for one iteration and say if the loop invariant was true before, then how do we say that the loop invariant is true afterwards? So we're, we teach this notion of symbolically um, evaluating a loop to say that the loop invariant is always preserved, or we say, give an example of um, values that the assignable variables could be set to at the beginning of the loop, such that the loop invariant holds initially, the loop guard holds initially, and the next time we get to the loop invariant, it will evaluate to false. And there we're not asking a question that they identify as being uh, deep proof of, um, of correctness. We're asking them, like, you know, here's some code, break it. And that's the thing that's still very difficult for them to get. But I think that you, know, in, in, when talking about um, where I can expect most of the students to get to, being able to explain to them why a proof doesn't work in terms of an, a counterexample that you could run and that the program would fail because you would violate at runtime a loop invariant and it would throw up a oh the loop invariant on this line evaluated defaults. That's, a, that's an incredibly um, useful artifact of being able to execute these contracts at runtime, is what we're doing when we're teaching them to um, reason about, um, about code, is we're teaching them to evaluate and create proofs. But we're asking them to create proofs usually once they already have a, um, a loop invariant. And then you're almost there because once they learn to be, um, um, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, not confrontational, adversarial. Once they learn to be adversarial about their own statements of correctness, once they learn to say, oh, I think this is the reason that my code is correct, but if I'm wrong, why? Then now they're in the process of saying, okay, I've got a loop invariant that's wrong. I'm going to have to change it. Okay, now I have a loop invariant. Is it right or is it wrong? Can I move on from here or am I going to have to change that? So that, that sets them off on the cycle of being able to iterate in future courses um, with their proofs. But it, it, it makes it a much smaller question of, all right, I've got a proof, you know, is it, it, am, am I going to be able to come up with a, um, uh, or I've, I've got a set of contracts, am I going to be able to come up with a proof that these are correct, or am I going to be able to come up with a counterexample that shows that I have a problem? Um, so, and, and in that, at that point we're reasoning, we're having them reason about, um, about proofs, but we're also having a conversation about testing, which is another big deal for um, students at this level.